What's up everyone? Welcome to another little tutorial here. Today we're going to start doing something I'm very excited by is modular design. Now if you're an environment artist, modular design is a great way of populating your environments with a small number of assets to make large scenes. Uh, we're going to kick it off with something fairly simple. I'm going to jump over to the software view here and show you what we're doing. We are going to make a modular pipe kit. So I've already sort of got, here's one I made earlier, set of models here for you. And these would be for your, uh, for your interior environments for your industrial areas and you see pipes going along the walls um, this is a modular kit if you played games like uh, fallout you'll have seen these kind of things before and they are designed so that each piece can snap onto other pieces uh, like so and they'll all fit together and you can make uh, large complicated structures out of a small number of pieces now they're commonly used for the exteriors of buildings they're commonly used for interiors of buildings making corridors and rooms and I will be making tutorials on that later on as well. But we're going to kick off just with this fairly simple one, uh, just making this little pipe kit. Uh, we will take it into Substance Painter as well. We'll texture it up and we'll take it into Unreal and I'll show you how it actually looks in game once we're all done. But for this first video, we're just going to worry about uh, actually making the model. So we'll try and go through each of these pieces, hopefully get it done in about half an hour or so. And uh, then we can uh, work on polishing it up. So we're just going to keep it very low poly. Now, you could make high poly versions of these, take them into ZBrush, ding them up a little bit, uh, do all that stuff and give them wee nice fine uh, beveled edges, things like that. I'm not going to do that in this video. I do have other videos about the high poly to low poly process. I would advise you try that because that will make your final result look a bit better. But we're wanting to keep it quite simple. I've given this a two-star complexity rating because even though the pieces are actually quite simple, we have to do a little bit of mathematics in our head in order to get these the right size so they all fit together. Um, okay, let's get started. We're going to start with the, the most basic piece. We're going to make our straight section of pipe, and we're going to start with a cylinder. And the important thing with a modular kit is that all of your pieces fit together on a grid system. So what we're going to do is we are going to make this straight piece here is one meter long. It's going to be our... Um, it's going to be our standard size piece and the width of this is one meter, uh, this is one meter, this is one meter and then we have a two meter and a half meter piece as well just to give us a bit more variety. Um, what I want to do, I want to start with the cylinder. I'm going to give it just one height segment. I will give it a wee cap segment here. I'll flip over the modifier, see if we can fix that. One, one height segment, give it an extra cap segment so we can see cap on top. I'm going to give it a radius of 15 centimeters. Now, all of our pieces are going to be 15 centimeters uh, thick. Wait a minute. Have I got this right? And I want to make it 96 centimeters tall. Now, our full thing is going to be one meter, but I want to make this 96. And you'll see why shortly. So 30 centimeters. Uh, 30 centimeters thick. It's got a radius of 15, so overall it's 30 centimeters thick. That's very thick for a pipe, but it'll do for our uh, do for our little kit here. Cap segments too. What I also want to do is set the sides up to 20. Now I want that number of sides to be divisible by four, and I'll show you why later on. But basically, we want to make sure that it's divisible by four so that we have a nice sort of a 90 degree angle cross uh, subdivision in there somewhere. So it can be 24, it can be 16, whatever, just as long as it's divisible by four. So that's okay, that's all set up. 96 centimeters high, 20 sides. We're going to right click, we're going to convert that to an edible poly. And uh, we're going to go to our polygon mode. Do, do, do. And we're going to select all of these, but I'm not going to select these one by one, that's going to take far too long. In actual fact, I'm going to go to my vertex mode. I'm going to select this very center one. And I'm going to control click again on poly. And you'll see that that selects all the polys that's attached to. I'm going to hit grow. There we go. And that's quickly selected all of those. So remember, uh, control click from one to the other. Uh, what I want to do now is extrude this out. I want to extrude this by two centimeters. Two. And hit OK. And then I want to extrude this little rim out. So I'm going to select one, hold shift, and then you'll see it highlights the ring around it to quickly select that and I'm going to extrude by three centimeters this time and this is going to give us that little uh, edge rim whoops don't forget when we're extruding this uh, three centimeters we want to change the extrusion method 
from group here, you'll see that in group mode, I just want to slide it along. That's not what we want. So three centimeters, want to change this to local normal. And that'll make it extend out in equal directions all around. That's perfect. That's exactly what we want. And hit OK for that. And we're just going to repeat that process on the bottom. We are going to once again select our center vertex. Going to control click on polygon mode and hit grow. Extrude by two centimeters. Select around here, extrude by three centimeters. So change that to three, hit the little tick. There we go. So now we've got our piece. Now we started with 96, we added two to the top and we added two to the bottom. So we have a one meter tall piece of pipe. And that's that done. That is our straight piece done. We're going to go to the top level here. Uh, do you know what I'm going to do as well? Doesn't really matter, but I'm just going to move all these back. I'm going to move this piece. Uh, I'm just going to right click at each of these wee buttons down here just to center it. Now you'll see that our center here starts right in the bottom. Sorry, not right in the bottom. I start it on the original uh, bottom piece. I want to center this just for now. So I want that pivot point to be in the center. I'm going to select you, effect pivot only, center the object. And you'll see that that pivot point has now skipped up in the middle. That'll come in important later on. We'll leave that for now, uh, but it'll come in important later on. Now what we want to do is, um, you'll see here that we had zeroed this out. It's now 48 centimeters in the Z axis. I want to change this just up to 50. And there we can see now that that is sitting right on the grid, on the zero point. The whole thing's a meter tall. This is in the middle. So it's halfway, it's 50. Uh, okay, what I want to do is make these other two pieces. And these are really, really easy to make. I'm just going to select you. I'm going to hold shift and move you over. And I'm actually going to rename these as well. Uh, pipe, straight, two meters. Uh, what I could also do actually is call this pipe uh, R15. Because if we make multiple pipe sets, they might have different radiuses. We might have thin ones, we might have thicker ones. So it's pipe kit, the radius, it's a straight section, and we're going to say the length of it. And I'm actually just going to copy this name, control C, and this one that we left original uh, up here at the top, we're going to rename it as well. Uh, this is the one meter section. This will be really handy when we go into Unreal or Game Engine, have these all named nicely. Uh, so let me see, if I grab this one, move it over to the left, Pipe 15 straight or one meter. We're going to call this um, 0.5 meter. And all I want to do with this is I want to go to my modifier panel, go into my vertex mode. I'm just going to grab all of these top vertexes here. And up here in the move panel, what I can do is I can right click on this, not the move panel, the move option, sorry. Right click on this, uh, move transform, absolute world or offset world sorry we can see the blue axis the z-axis so I'm going to move this minus 50 and when I hit enter we will see that that shrinks that down to halfway and we'll take this one we can just top level that come out of that go into this one now we do the same thing go to vertex mode select all these vertexes right click here and in the offset, we're going to change that Z axis, the vertical axis, to, uh, we're going to give it an additional 100, meter, 100 centimeters. So turn it up to 100, boom, there we go. So we've got three pieces made here. We're going to go top level, and that's those three done. Let's now focus on these two little pieces here. This is basically a quarter turn with a 50 centimeter uh, radius from the middle. And this one has a 25 centimeter radius. Really, really easy to make these. And it's very, very similar, uh, the method that we used to actually creating what we had in the first place here, uh, the, the earlier ones. We're going to create a torus this time. Whoops. So a torus this time is this little option here. And when we select this, I'll close this. When we select this, go to modifier, we're also going to set this to a Radius 1 is the size of the whole circle, and then radius 2 is the thickness of it. 
So radius one, we're going to give this 100 centimeters as a radius, and radius two, we're going to give 15. What we also want to do now is put the number of sides up to 20, so it matches the rest of our uh, straight pieces. Uh, number of segments, we've got 24 here at the minute. That's looking a little bit blocky for my tastes, and we're actually going to get rid of three quarters of this, so don't be worrying about the poly count. Put the segments way up. Uh, again, we want this to be divisible by four so that we have a perfect kind of split here. We can delete three quarters of it. So we'll put this up to 40. 40 would be a good number. Uh, actually, we don't want a radius of 100 centimeters. That's not what we want. We want to do the same things we did before on this one. We want a radius of uh, take away two, take away two, we want a radius of I think 98. I hope I'm correct on that. 98, or is it 96? 96. No, sorry, 96. That should be correct. No, 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 it's not. It is 98. 98. I hope I'm right in that. God, I hope I'm right. It doesn't really matter. It won't matter if it's uh, exactly 50 or 40 or whatever, but it's nice just... The, the main thing is we get the, the inner radius of 15 centimeters correct. Um, it'd be nice if it was exactly 50, and I think 98 should give us exactly 50. Uh, convert this to edible poly. We'll go to our polygon mode now. Uh, I'm just going to hit T for top mode. So we can see right from the top, I'm going to select all of these polys on one side, delete all of these polys, and delete. I've just realized I've made this far too big. The radius shouldn't be 98. Now I've got a 2 meter pipe. Ugh. Okay, I guess we're getting a 2 meter pipe. Okay. Um, back to perspective mode. I guess we're getting an extra piece. There you go, bonus content. Uh, let me see, Taurus. So we're going to create another one. And this one we want to be have a radius of uh, 24. I forgot the difference between a radius and a diameter there. Radius 1, 24. Radius 2 is 15. No, this isn't working out right. This isn't working out right at all. What's going on? You are about the same size as that. So you're okay. 25. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, I'm getting confused here. All this mathematics. This is why I gave this a complexity of 2. So that's right. That is a radius of 24, which means the whole thing's 48. And then I'm going to add 2 onto it. Make it 50. Yes, that's correct. Uh... Yes, and I'm going to move this over. And I'm going to give this one a radius of 49. 40. Is it? I can't think. Let me see. How does it look? Is that still too big? Let's compare it to the one we had yesterday. Yeah, that's right. That's okay. 49, add 2. No, I'll make it 48. This is why the maths are so complicated. This is why I've got a 2 star. I can't even think of it myself. Uh, okay, so we've got our little small one here. And this is radius 1 of 24 centimeters. Or should that be 23? I don't know. I should have planned this out. I should have planned it out. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. It's just me being pernickety. Uh, 24 times 2 is 48. No. We just want 24. Let's make that 23. Because we're going to take this edge and add 2 centimeters to it. But then is the center. I don't know. I can't think. It doesn't matter. We'll make it anyway. Um, we're going to do the same thing. We'll, we'll need to rename these as well. So let me see. Uh, this is a 90 degree bend. We'll just call this uh, pipe bend uh, R15. And the size of this was a radius of 50, I believe. Uh, 
we'll just copy that, control C. Oh, whoops. We just want to copy that name in there, not the whole object itself. This one is an R of 25. And this one, yeah, screw this one, we'll delete it. We've got enough already. You can just increase that radius if you want bigger pieces. Uh, so we've got those named correctly. Right click, convert to Edible Poly. Am I happy with those numbers? 48. We add two on the side. Yeah, 48. I'm happy with that. And here, 23, add two, it'll be a radius of 20. It'll be 25 all together. Yep, I'm happy with that. Convert to Edible Poly. So again, we'll go to your top view. And we'll just delete three quarters of these. Select polygon mode and delete everything. Oh, wrong one. Wow, the production values are through the roof in today's video, aren't they, guys? Which is ironic because I actually did prepare this earlier and I still don't know what I'm doing. Never put me on live TV. Okay, delete all of these guys. Oops. Top level, come back to this one now. Polygon mode. Same thing, we're going to delete three quarters of them. Delete three quarters of them. And that gives us our nice little bends here. By perspective view. There we go, perfect. Now what we want to do is we need to cap off these ends. So we're going to choose this little border option. We don't use this a lot, but it's really handy here. We we'll just select the border and you see it selects around that ring. I'm just going to hit the cap option here. Pop, there we go, little cap on it. We are going to select this one, cap, there we go. And what we're going to do is we hit our good friend extrude again. Uh, we can actually do this all in one chunk. We'll select you and we'll select you. We'll extrude. Uh, extrude by local normal. And we're going to extrude that by two centimeters. Hit OK. And then we're going to select you, hold shift and select. Hold control. And then hold shift, select you. We bit finicky with the buttons in, but you will get it if you play about with it enough. Uh, we're going to extrude this by three, so it's exactly the same as the other one. Hit OK, and there we go. Job done. That is our uh, that is our corner piece done. The large one. A couple of wee things we'll do here just to tidy this up. Uh, we're actually going to reselect these rings. Now they stayed selected, thankfully, but just again we'll hold shift to select it. Control click U, shift click U. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to give these a smoothing group because they actually, if I deselect them, top level F4, get rid of all that, you can see here that they've got that kind of, because they're extruded, it loses all smoothing groups off and they don't look quite right. So we will put a smoothing group on those guys. And it just, if we scroll all the way down, we get our smoothing groups here. Just chuck any one on at all, it doesn't matter. But that will just smooth those out. So if I deselect, see it smooths out that little faceted kind of uh, view. Press F4, show that up. I always like to have my uh, wireframe display on there. And that's that one complete. The only other thing we might want to do in this that can be useful is if we take... Now, we don't normally like these big N-gons, polygons that have multiple sides on them. What we could do here, if we select opposite polygons and we hit connect, that'll put a line between these. And we could then turn on our snap toggle. If we right click on that, we want to activate midpoint. What this will allow us to do is uh, where am I looking here? Go to your edge mode. We select that edge. We can hit insert vertex. And it will allow us to insert a vertex right in the middle of that. And you see the line highlights and a little square there. We can insert a vertex there. And what this will allow us to do is if we go to our vertex mode now, we can... Uh, we, can, we can turn this off now, we can turn snaps off for a start because it's actually very awkward to use if we don't want it. We can select every second chunk here and hit connect. And you can see that gives us these little four-sided polys, kind of like orange segments. So that's an option that we can do. It doesn't really matter, but if you're really insistent on getting those four-sided polys, 
um, we can do that just by inserting the, the vertex in the middle and we use those snaps to find the exact midpoint. Now this is really useful as well because what we're going to do is we are going to go to our hierarchy here, we're going to go effect pivot only and you can see that the pivot point for this is actually in the middle where that original torus was. Now we don't want that so we're going to move this, uh, again we're going to activate our snaps again and we're going to just grab this and move it to that point and that means that when we rotate this piece of pipe around in Unreal, it'll be easier just to snap it to uh, one of the other pieces. It'll be easier to sort of click it and place it on top of one of these guys. So we'll deactivate activate pivot only. And basically we have to repeat that process uh, over here for this one. So I'm going to go top level. I'm not going to finish off uh, doing that at the bottom. It doesn't really matter um, because it's going to be a static mesh in the end. But we'll repeat that process sort of not too complicated, but I'll show you again anyway, just to complete this piece off. Select your border here, select the cap, select the cap, and then we hit cap. Then we we'll go to our polygon mode, select you, select you, control click on each one to select them both. Going to extrude, going to extrude by two centimeters. And then we're going to select, oh, whoops. Yes, so two centimeters, hit the little plus sign. We're going to select these guys, we're going to select these guys. Remember, control click and then shift click to select the, the whole line around. Uh, we're going to extrude these by local normal. Make sure it's set to local normal to, to extrude them out the way. We'll get that nice sticky out of shape. Uh, we're going to, we always do these three centimeters. Hit OK. And with these select, we just need to do the smoothing group again. So we scroll all the way down with those selected. And again, just pick any random smoothing group. Doesn't matter which one. We'll come to top level. I've got those nice pieces. I will just find my midpoint here. I will select two opposite vertices. And I will hit connect. And then I'll go to my edge mode with my snaps on insert vertex and just find that midpoint of that line. There we go. That's all I want to do. I'm not even going to split that into quads just to save time in the video. We could do this on the other uh, the other side as well would probably be useful just so that we can uh, snap both ends because we can snap from can we? If we were keeping it on max we could snap from vertex to vertex so we'll maybe do that just to, just to give you that option. Uh, connect Edge mode, toggle on, insert vertex right in the middle. So that's all I want to do. That's all we're doing that. Uh, last thing we need to do then is just take that pivot point again. If we look there, it's right in the middle of that hole in that donut shape. So come to our hierarchy, fake pivot only, and we will Oh, turn our snaps on. We'll just drag you to this midpoint. Where are we? Can we get it there? That doesn't seem right. I believe that's us. Yep, there we go. So there we go. We now have five pieces of our modular kit. And what I'll do is I will just rotate this. And you'll see why it's useful now to actually put this uh, on that end point. If I rotate you around, it'll rotate you up nice. I want this exactly 90. Another useful wee rotation snap we have here is the angle snap. And that will do it in multiples of 5 degrees. So you can see there going 85, 90. That's really, really handy. I usually have that on all the time. Just get that to exactly 90. There we go. We can turn that off and turn that off. And what we'll just do as well is what we should be doing every time, we will, oh no, whoops, I'll go to our move tool, zero out, zero out, I'll move it along, select this one, zero it, zero it, and move it along, just to keep them all in a straight line, sort of nice organizationally. So the other way around, we've got all these pieces. Now we want to get this piece, this little uh, T-shaped piece. 
So how we're going to do that, we're going to take our straight line piece, we're going to move this over, and we're going to have pipe R15, uh, we're going to call this one T, and yeah, we'll call it one meter. There we go. And let me see, what do I want to do with this one now? I want to get the modifier list, I want to add a modifier. And I want to call that modifier uh, symmetry. There we go. Now, we won't see anything happening there at the minute. But what we need to do is we need to rotate the, the symmetry modifier. You can see if I if I zoom out here, it's easier to see. This little orange box is the symmetry plane. It's basically the angle that that symmetry is happening in. And what I want to do is rotate that by 45 degrees, and that will sort of bend this uh the top of the object now it's hard to see for there's a glitch in my max there's there should be two icons here they don't appear they should appear in yours but if you click here you can expand this down and we can select that mirror itself and you see it highlights yellow there and we have it selected what i want to do is i want to rotate that i'm going to turn my angle snap on again and watch what happens when i rotate that mirror I want to rotate it 45 degrees. Let me see, do I want a different angle? Yes. Oh, wait, it's not locking to the specific one. There we go. I want to rotate this exactly 45 degrees. And now we've got that symmetry. The mirror is at a 45 degree angle. So it's mirroring that shape at an angle. And that's exactly what we want. So I'm going to deselect that. And at this point, I could put another symmetry modifier on top, but I like to just convert to edit or poly at this point. Symmetry modifier can be hard enough to work with without putting two on top of another. So I've just converted that to an edit or poly. That gives us this final shape. And then I am going to add another symmetry modifier onto you. Now, it is sort of reflecting in the wrong way. But if I just hit flip here, look what it gives us. That mirror is, once again, it's on the center pivot point line. Um, but it's reflecting the other way. Now, what it's also doing for us is really handy is it's welding these seams together for us. So it's not giving us any extra vertices or anything like that. It's all nice. It's got really nice geometry. You can see these nice tight lines here, and that's what we want. This is actually the reason why we wanted to have a number divisible by four. So you can see here we've got the, the vertical line and then the horizontal line. And as that continues right round, those horizontal lines connect up and we get really nice clean geometry there. That's because the number of uh, segments we have here is a multiple of four. So that's that. Right click, convert to edit poly. And that's our T-piece. Very, very easy. That's a lot easier than the these little bend pieces, isn't it? Uh, so we can rotate that round. Uh, we'll just select you, just to keep everything neat and tidy. Rotate, um, select the right axis there, go for 90, perfect. This little one here is going to be very, very easy. All we're going to do is select you. Uh, what we could do with this guy, what might be useful is to move the pivot on him down to the base here. You might want to do that. But we could also leave it in the middle because it's still going to be run right through the midpoint from here to here. That'll work just as well. Up to you. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to move him and create a duplicate. We're, we're holding shift and move to create a duplicate. Uh, pipe, radius 15. There's going to be a cross shape this time. And uh, is it one meter? Yeah, it is. It's a one meter in total size. And do you know what? We're just going to do the exact same again. We are going to add a modifier. If we go down, we're going to add symmetry. And it doesn't look like it's adding anything symmetry wise. Uh, if we zoom out, we can see the direction that that mirror is going in. That symmetry mirror is not quite right. What we can do is we can change the axis. So we just play about with them and we'll see what we get. Z axis. Now, the Z axis is the flat one, it's what we want. It's not doing exactly what we want right now. It's sort of mirroring the, the top instead of the bottom. So we just hit flip. And now it's flipping the, the bottom instead of the top. Perfect. There we go. And again, we've got that nice clean geometry. 
One thing I forgot to do though, on my original ones, I need to go back, is fix these smoothing grips. I should have done this at the start. So we can see here we've got that wee fastening on the ends. But that's okay, that's a two minute fix, we can sort that out. Uh, it's also given us some funny smoothing grip stuff here. Um, down in the middle, if we look, we're getting these weird shadows. Now what we can do here is change these smoothing grips as well. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go, uh, let's see, we've got that symmetry modifier. I want to right click this, convert to edit poly, just to collapse down that symmetry modifier and it's all one now. What I'm going to do, I'm going to select my, oh look at that, these are automatically selected, that's really, really handy. I might not do that for you, but because I had them originally selected and the, the old and the street one is still selected. So again, perfect, that saves me a couple of seconds, keep the video nice and short. Just select any random smoothing group, and there we go, they're nice and smooth. Now let me see, hopefully this will work if I select all of you guys, give it another random one. Uh, we'll start with 25, set you, 28, uh, give you 32, uh, just as long as you don't have the same smoothing group, might shorten it out a little bit. Sort of solidifying that wee seam there. We're still going to be a bit of shadowing, but I can live with it. It's okay. Uh, go top level. We'll just do the same on this guy. Press F4 again so we can see everything we have here. Uh, go to your polygon mode. Oh, look at that. It's got these selected. Again, if it doesn't have these selected, we just select one, hold shift, and select the rim. Control click on another, shift click around the rim. Control click on the third, shift click around. Uh, then all we have to do is grab a smoothing group. Do, 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 do. Any smoothing group at all. I'll fix those. And we'll do, I'll go back and do this to these as well before we start in the next video. I'll not make you watch all that. Uh, last wee piece we want to make is our little valve piece. So you can see what we have here is this little, uh, it's kind of like a T-shape. And all we're going to do, we're going to take our T-shape that we have and we're going to adapt that. So I'm going to shift and drag you over with the move tool. Create a duplicate. And I'm going to call you, uh, let's see, page R15, uh, let's call you valve, valve, uh, valve piece. That'll do, probably a better name for it, but you'll do. Uh, I'm going to rotate this guy around 90 degrees that way, 90 degrees that way. Um, luckily enough, yeah, because we kept that pivot right in the center, because it, from the, the center of this one, those are rotating quite nicely. That's actually really handy having that pivot point right in the center. Um, let me see now. We are going to select all of our vertexes here. And we're just going to select these guys. And I'm going to move this in the X direction, uh, let me see. We'll move it down. Because we're working on multiples of 100, we'll move this to exactly 25. There we go. Now, I got this exactly 25 centimeters because we had set it on the origin point, if you remember. So it's already on the zero line, the actual object itself. So that should set the these at the 25 centimeter mark. That'll be nice for us. Uh, let me see, that's that. So now we just want to create the little uh, piece that will go on it and the little valve itself. So easy enough to create the little valve piece. We're going to get a sphere this time. And we're going to grab that. And we're going to give this a we're going to modify. Give this a radius again of 15. We are going to give it segments. Uh, we'll keep everything nice, we'll keep it 20. Uh, hemisphere, we're going to put this to 0.5. And what that does is it basically cuts off the bottom. Uh, if, we, if we slide the hemisphere up, you'll see what this does. But we'll put that exactly to 0.5. We'll get a sort of semicircle. And we are now going to convert to edible poly. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this little top piece here. Uh, actually, what I want to do with these, I want this nice and flat. I can move it up or down, but that might not get me exactly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this entire ring here. 
all of these. I'm going to zoom down to the little align buttons here. X, Y, Z. Now I believe it should be the Z axis. And that'll just flatten that down. So that'll put them on a line. And that's going to be handy because the next thing I want to do is I want to select that middle vertex. I want to control click on polygon mode just to select all these polys. And I'm going to extrude this out by about three centimeters. That'll do. There we go. It's all twos and threes. Uh, this gives us our classic problem now. We don't have the smoothing groups around here. So we'll just smooth those out. Select one, shift click on its adjacent friend to select the whole ring. All the way down. Give it a random smoothing group. There we go. Bob's your own. Down at the bottom here, uh, we're going to do the same thing that we've done for all the other pieces, just to create a little sort of a rim shape on it. We're going to select all these bottom polys. We're going to use our classic method we know, control click on polygon mode with that center vertex selected. To select them all, we're going to extrude. We're going to extrude this by two centimeters. And then we're going to select around the rim here. Extrude by, whoops, make sure this is set to local normal this time. Make sure it comes out the right way. Uh, set this to three centimeters so it matches in. Perfectly done. Uh, final thing, just again, smoothing groups. Anyone at all will do grand. So now if we rotate this around, Yeah, wouldn't select correctly. I don't want to do that. There we go. I always find these can be very finicky. Getting my right axis. There we go. Now that will just uh, plop on that end piece there. Like so. That's the right size that we can just we can snap that on there like so. And the last thing we need to create we'll finish the video off, it's just a little valve handle. Now little valve handles, it uh, looks a bit complicated, but it's not actually too bad. Uh, we're going to create a torus. Actually, we just need to name this piece, don't we? Uh, select U, modify, we'll just copy the name from this one. Pipe 15, copy U. And we'll call this one valve piece, not the valve piece, we'll call this uh, maybe the valve cap. And it doesn't even need to be one meter long because it's not one meter. There we go, valve cap. So for that, the final piece we'll make is the, the valve here. And we want to get another torus again. And it doesn't need to be as big as the other ones. So we'll just pick a random size here. Go to our modify tab. Uh, we're going to give this one a radius of uh, 30. Is that right? And we'll give it a radius 2 of, say, 3 centimeters. Is that the right size? Maybe that's a wee bit too big. Maybe go 25 here. Let me see. Does that look about right compared to that one? Yeah, that's okay. 25. Uh, we're going to give this one... It doesn't need as many sides on it. We're going to give this one 8 sides. And what we're going to do is we will... Again, give this a multiple of four. You can see that the design is going to be split into four here. So, a good number divisible by four. What worked in the last one there, when I was testing out earlier, is if we go for 24 segments. And then what this will allow us to do, if we convert this to an edible poly, just to give it a little bit of shape. Just to shape it slightly, take away from the, the spherical look of it. Go to my edge mode. Go to select this top ring here. I just double click that. I'll select that whole ring all the way around. I'm just going to move that down flat. I'm just eyeballing it. Doesn't need to be perfect at all. Uh, now I'm going to go to polygon mode. I'm going to go to my top view here. I might even hit T for top mode just so I can see uh, the shape of this exactly. I'm going to select these polys, the ones below, and these ones. And these ones. So you see, we have that number of sides. We have uh, four groups of four selected with a little gap of two in between. And that gives us a good shape. We're just going to go extrude. And we're just going to extrude this out again by local normal, not 10 centimeters. 
we're just going to eyeball it and give it maybe just over one centimeter will do perfect there we go and we could detail this up a bit further we could put a bit more onto it soften off some of these edges and things but it's a low poly kit and we're sort of dragging off time here i'm sure you're sick listening to my voice already so we'll just leave it like that what we are going to do is just this kind of underside set of polys here on each of these four and around here we're going to select these and then we're going to extrude them out now we're going to extrude these just until they're about touching in the middle or just short of touching and no more just get that kind of shape so it'll be 16 17 centimeters will be perfect well okay uh, I'm going to hit P, I'm in orthographic, just go back into perspective mode. There we go, that looks better. Uh, what I want to do now is connect some of these pieces together. So I'm going to go to my edge mode. I'm going to select this guy and this guy. I'm going to select bridge. Oh, it's not working. Why is it not working? Oh, why are you not working? That is very, very odd. Where you, uh, oh, that's why. That's why. I'm going to select uh, these inner polygons. Delete these. I don't need these ones. That's why the bridge isn't working. So I select all these and delete them. Now I should be able to select these edges and bridge these together. There we go. That's what I want. Select these two opposite and bridge them. Select these two. Bridge. And select these two. And bridge. There we go. So now what we'll do is we will select our little border icon again. Select this entire top loop and hit cap. And we will select this entire bottom loop and hit cap and there we go now we've got a little bit of funkiness happening here but what we can do is we control control click from border to vertex now I'll select all those bottom vertexes and we are just going to once again go down to our little align tool we used it earlier on the little xyz here and I've hit z there we go that flattens them all out nicely and we'll do the same on the top uh, let me see your best way to do this is border Select that whole little top border there. It's not really that's like that border. I might need to just select this manually. Just control click around each of these. Bit of finicky, but oh well. Control click on vertex. There we go. And once again, X, Y, Z, Z is the vertical axis. Now I'll smooth that off, just sharpen that out a wee bit. There we go. So simple wee valve handle there. Just go right click, top level. And I'm happy with that. So what we can do is we can just select you, uh, rotate you 90 degrees. If it will actually go in the right axis for me. I find if it doesn't go the way I want originally, select a different axis and then click back on the one I want. Always seems to work. And if we just move this now roughly in position there. That looks quite nice. We'll keep those two pieces separate because we can maybe have like a straight line bar lever instead of a wheel. Um, or different shaped valve wheels or whatever. Uh, it just gives that a little bit of versatility. So we just need to call this one uh, pipe underscore. Uh, do you know what? We don't even do the 15 because that could fit on in multiple kits. We'll just call this a uh, valve wheel. Uh, we'll give it 25 because it's actually got 25 centimeter radius. There we go. So I'm happy enough with that. That's our little kit there. Um, 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the video here and in part two we will unwrap these. I think the video has dragged on long enough here. What time are we at for the video? Yeah, 45 minutes. That's long enough for this. Uh, we'll leave it there and we will unwrap next time. Just remember the last thing we have to do is just go back and fix the little smoothing groups here. I'll do that off camera, but just remember to do that yourself as well if you're following along. And that gives us our kit. Now, you can, of course, make multiple other pieces. You can make uh, pieces with bigger radiuses. You can uh, change the shape of these, maybe make them curved instead of straight. Really, you're only limited by your imagination. The only thing that matters is you kind of stick to the grid. Make sure everything is the same radius at the, the cap ends. Um, and just make sure everything clicks together. Try and go for consistency so you can see that they, all of this little um, rim of two centimeters thick, about three centimeters deep. Uh, I try to keep my multiples, all multiples of either one meter, 50 centimeter, 25 centimeters. And you can even see the bother that I had. It, it, it is difficult working some of this stuff out in your head, especially with these curves. Uh, what should this radius be when you factor in that you have to add another two centimeters on each, each end of it, you know? So, um, the maths does get a little bit complicated, but just try and work it out in your head and try and keep it straight in your head as you measure these out. Um, that's not, that's terrible advice. That's not really very good advice. That doesn't count at all. I've been doing this for years and I still couldn't work out these numbers. Um, but, oh well, we'll figure it out. Let's leave it there and we'll come back in part two where we unwrap these and then we'll take them on any substance paint around Unreal after. So thank you for watching. Hope you found that vaguely entertaining or informative and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.